Elon Musk's idea for living on Mars is unquestionably the most audacious of any modern leader. Elon Musk isn't the first person to conceive this notion, but he is the only one so far who has the money, resources, and burning desire to see it through. Although we are still in the early stages, the seeds of life on Mars have already been planted. But when we get there, what exactly are we going to find? And what would it be like to live on Mars when a million people eventually inhabit the red planet? Keep watching till the end to find out. The basic assumption for moving people and things to Mars is actually rather straightforward, especially since Elon Musk and SpaceX have already figured it out to a large extent. Our means of transit between Earth and Mars is the SpaceX Starship. This is the same rocket that successfully completed a takeoff and landing test. The SN-15 prototype, which nailed the landing, is quite similar to the final spaceship product. It's just a massive, stainless steel rocket ship capable of taking off from a planet, flying into space, and landing safely. It can do this over and over again, stopping only to refuel between trips. This is a game-changing breakthrough, since it's the first time a rocket of this magnitude has been successfully launched. Transportation The spacecraft will serve as a transportation link between Earth and Mars. Some will transport people, but many more will transport supplies. On each flight, the spaceship can transport 100 metric tons of cargo. In contrast, that's around 50 Tesla Model 3 automobiles. When the Earth and Mars come closest in orbit every two years, fleets of starships will make the seven-month trek between the two worlds. The first passage will be a few ships to test the seas, but thousands of ships will be sent from Earth to Mars after a few cycles. But what are the challenges and difficulties of living on Mars? Temperature Obviously, no one expects Mars to be a pleasant and comfortable place to live from the start, but how difficult is it going to be? The average temperature is roughly minus 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Even by Canadian standards, it's ridiculously cold. The equator of the planet Mars may attain a maximum temperature of approximately 20 degrees Celsius during the summer. On Mars, the atmosphere is almost non-existent, and what is present is primarily carbon dioxide. On Mars, the amount of atmospheric gas is less than 1% of what we have on Earth. There is also nothing on Mars' surface to protect it from cosmic radiation. That's awful, since the Sun maintains our life on Earth only because our atmosphere is able to screen out all the harmful radiation that would either kill us or transform us into superheroes if we were exposed to it. Still, someone would have to be willing to find out. Gravity On Mars, gravity is also significantly lower. Because Mars is far smaller than Earth, its gravity is only about a third as powerful. That's really a good thing for us, since the human body will be substantially weakened after seven months of weightlessness in space. As a result, restoring strength on Mars will be simpler than trying to return home after a lengthy stay on Earth. However, overcoming it will be extremely difficult and will require an intense physical and mental training. Dust Storms Then there are the massive dust storms that may blanket the entire globe. Dust will be a significant concern on Mars in various circumstances. As we indicated, the wind on Mars wouldn't be a major concern since the atmosphere is so much thinner than it is here on Earth. So even in a 100 km high dust storm on Mars, the wind is only blowing at around 60 km per hour. The dust, on the other hand, will be the main issue. It spreads like wildfire. All of our equipment will need to be completely sealed to prevent dust from seeping inside and destroying anything. Keeping solar panels clean is going to be a pain in the neck. As a result, the dust storms will be severe. And as a result, Mars is not going to be a safe haven. People will most likely die, as Elon himself has stated. Everything on Mars will have such a small margin for error. Any small error or equipment malfunction might result in a person's death. Carbon Dioxide in 2018, formal research published in the journal Nature Astronomy determined that there just isn't enough carbon dioxide stored on Mars. If it were released, it would not produce any significant warming of the globe, as far as we know. Other experts have stated that even if there was enough gas for this plane to function, if the explosion kicked up enough Martian dust, the whole thing may backfire and trigger a nuclear winter scenario. It might just blanket the entire world and keep the sun out for years. Having stated the difficulties with living on Mars, what are the measures we are taking to ensure a sustainable colony is actually built? 
Here's how we would be able to sustain and propagate up to a million lives living on the planet at the same time. 3D Printed Egg-Shaped Construction Here's a brilliant concept in real life. Buildings on Mars might be 3D printed eggs composed of soil. This is a groundbreaking invention from AI Space Factory, a company that has developed an automated procedure for 3D printing an egg-shaped structure using resources gathered on Mars. The goal is to create a long-lasting construction material by combining basalt with bioplastics. The basalt fibers and the polylactic acid-binding substance would be recovered from Martian rock, making both workable. Plants that might be cultivated in greenhouses on Mars would be used to extract liquid and solid. A 3D printing robot would construct a very robust, sturdy, and insulating shell as a consequence. The circumstances on Mars require a construction that can withstand internal air pressure and temperature strains. The AI Space Factory believes that an egg form would be suitable to satisfy those requirements. There would be no hallways, only several floors because everything would be built vertically. Remember that wind and gravity are much less of a concern on Mars. Thus, constructing upwards should be no problem. NASA has previously backed AI Space Factory, awarding the business a prize of $500,000 in their 2015 competition to uncover the most promising Martian architecture. Solar Power Providing power to a Martian colony will be a difficult task. The prospect of living underground for years on end on another planet is enough to drive a person nuts. It's also unlikely to be sustainable from a mental health standpoint. Solar power is the best concept we've had so far. However, this presents some additional difficulties. The amount of energy accessible from the Sun on Mars is around 40% less than it is on Earth. So that's a significant issue to begin with. And even in the best case scenario, any reasonably sized colony on Mars would require a startling number of solar panels to power it. Then there's the added dust issue. If the settlement gets caught in a dust storm, the sun's energy is diminished even further. Even on days where there are no storms, dust will accumulate on the panels and limit their efficacy. The frozen lakes on Mars might likewise be used to harvest hydrogen, although that's a bit more tricky. To begin with, we'll need electricity to run the mining process. So, while it may be an energy answer, it won't help us in the early stages of life on Mars as much as in the long run. There's no doubt that obtaining sufficient energy to power our technologies on Mars will be one of our biggest challenges. Inhabitants What's the next big question? Who will be the first to leave? Scientists and engineers will undoubtedly be among the first to set foot on Mars. Elon Musk intends to start landing uncrewed starships on Mars as early as 2024, so they'll have their work cut out for them. They won't be doing it for fun. The spacecraft will be filled with supplies that humans will need to begin constructing a base on Mars. We may even have automatic mechanisms in place that have already started working on their behalf by the time they arrive. So, in 30 years, tens of thousands of people may pack their belongings and leave Earth to live on Mars, most likely for the rest of their lives. You don't think of a return ticket while planning a trip like that. Simultaneously, people born on Mars would have never seen the Earth. As crazy as it may sound, our great-grandchildren might eventually be Martians.